Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today we are going to discuss the automation of the monitoring process of data recency. So what is this? What is its significance especially in case of batch ETL data processing and what architecture we can implement to automate the monitoring process on this we are going to discuss today in this video. Okay. So suppose we are having a S3 bucket which is basically our data lake and in that particular bucket the data is available in day wise partition format maybe year then month and then date okay this is 16th May then here this is 17th May partition and then here it is maybe 18th May partition that is today's partition like that the data is available in yy yy hyphen mm hyphen td format okay within that parquet data is available. Now suppose we are having a downstream ETL job okay which is dependent on the latest partition data. So what this ETL job will do maybe that is scheduled using airflow or something it will read the data from the latest partition apply some operation and then will generate some results right. Now suppose this particular job is scheduled at 4.30 pm and we already discussed with the source team who are basically writing the data in these partitions they agreed to bring the data in the latest partition by 4 pm okay we just kept a 30 minute cushion if something happens then at least 30 minute gap is there by that time also the source team can write the data okay like that the architecture is currently working so as per the discussion with source team by 4 pm in the latest partition data will be available and if they are not able to bring the data by at least 4 30 pm then what will happen all the downstream jobs or tasks or process which rely on the latest partition data they will be getting impacted okay so to ensure any subsequent task or the process that rely on the latest data don't get any issue the source team need to make sure that the data is available on time right but obviously in production system we might face certain challenges maybe the source team itself are getting data late so that's why they are sending the data late and as a result eventually what might happen that our this production ETL job might fail okay once it failed maybe there is a dedicated production support team one member from that team may come and inspect why this ETL job failed and maybe they will understand okay the data is not available in the latest partition then they will mail the source team that the data is not available please share the data okay and then the production support team will backfill this particular ETL job once source team send the data so this is kind of manual process so instead of that if we can implement such system where at 4 pm maybe one code will run and that will check whether in the latest partition the data arrived or not and if the data is not available the code itself will send automatic mail to the source team that data is not available please send it immediately because as per earlier discussion ideally it should be available by 4 pm our job will start at 4 30 pm so if the data is not available by that time our job will fail this mail has to be sent automatically how to send this automated manner that we will understand and there comes the concept of data recency that is it all indicates is the data added at the expected time or not sometime business might be interested to get some dashboard that how many days the data is coming within the time limit and for how many days it is not coming on time across a month like that kind of reports also sometime we might need to generate so how to automate this whole monitoring process using different AWS services that let us try to understand okay and the architecture is very simple actually so here what we are doing in left hand side we are having our source team who agreed to send the data in S3 by 4 pm okay so the data from source team are getting landed in our S3 latest partition maybe at 4 pm or at any time so we need to inspect whether the data is coming on time or not so what we will do in this case at 4 pm we will run one lambda code so the lambda code need to be scheduled so in this case obviously we will use the scheduling capability of cloudwatch or event bridge whatever you say using cloudwatch corn expression or rate expression we will trigger our lambda code at 4 pm and then this lambda what it will do it will go to that s3 bucket it will try to search that latest partition in that particular partition the lambda will check whether data is available or not okay so first thing what this particular architecture is different with respect to normal architecture is that mostly from s3 we trigger lambda code but in this case we want to make sure at a particular time the data should be available in s3 that we want to check and if it is not available we want to send mail 
So from S3 we cannot trigger lambda but rather what we have to do in this particular case is lambda will be triggered from CloudWatch and then it will check whether in S3 data is available or not in the latest partition on that expected time. Okay, that is one very important point with respect to this architecture and point number two is what file lambda will search for. Okay, that is a very interesting point because it might happen the source team is writing multiple files in that same S3 location in that current partition, right? So whether the data is partially written or completely written, how the lambda will understand from a single file search? The answer is already I discussed underscore success file. Because if this file is available in that latest partition, that means the complete data is written from the source team. Because this success file gets generated only when the complete data is written by our Spark code. So maybe the source team is using Spark code, they will write that complete data and then obviously the success file will be generated by Spark. So what the lambda will do at 4 pm it will search in that latest partition whether this underscore success file is present or not. If it is present, that means our downstream job will not be impacted. The source team has sent the data on time and that is perfectly fine. But suppose the success file is not available at 4 pm when the lambda will scan the S3 latest partition, it is not able to find out the success file. Then what we should do? We should directly send a mail to the source team. So in that case, what you can do in a simplest form, the lambda code you can fail. As soon as the lambda will fail, it will be obviously noted in CloudWatch matrix. From that matrix, you can maybe trigger a CloudWatch alarm if lambda fails and using that alarm, you can basically notify the source team with help of AWS SNS, right? You can send a mail that the file has not arrived. So this is the simple architecture. Two very important points. Generally, we trigger S3 to lambda, but in this case, lambda to S3, we are checking because on this expected timing, the file should be available. Point number two is, to understand the complete data is added at its expected time, we will look for the success file for that. Okay, right? So this is basically an architecture which can automate the process of data resilience. Now I will show you a simple lambda code which will search for a file in S3 and it will fail if it is not able to find out and in CloudWatch it will display as a matrix form. Okay, so that maybe one month after if suppose business team want to see in dashboard format how many days data came on time and how many days not you can simply show the CloudWatch visualization that itself will be sufficient okay right so let's go through that lambda code i will not show you the demo with success file but rather we will be looking for a simple csv file and we will do experiment using that right so here is my lambda code it is very simple if you observe that first we are creating a boto3 resource of s3 and we have already created a bucket. In that bucket, suppose we are having a folder called dataset. In that dataset, we are looking for citrusa.csv file. If the file is available, we will understand, okay, the data is fresh. If it is not, that means maybe source team has not sent the data. We need to send a mail automatically. Okay. So I am not showing you that CloudWatch alarm to SNS part because already I covered that in my previous video. You can check the description link. I'll be providing my previous video link there. Here we are just checking how to search for a file in S3 and if it does not able to find out the lambda should fail and we should able to visualize that in CloudWatch okay as matrix form. So here what we are doing to search for a file here s3.object we can use the bucket name is the first parameter and the second parameter is file name with directory that is file name is setosa.csv like underscore success file but that might be available within a directory so the directory name I am providing. In the example what I discussed just now, maybe this instead of data set, this folder, you might need to provide the latest partition, right? And on that, we are using load method. If this works, that means file exists or else this will throw an exception, okay, right? So let's go through the Lambda code in AWS. So I will just sign in. So here I am in my AWS management console. I will open Lambda in a new tab and in this tab, I will open S3. Now here I don't have any lambda, I will create a function data recency test123 some name I have given. I will choose python 3.10 and keeping all other properties default, I will create the function. Okay. So here I can paste that same lambda code and I will click on deploy. Now to scan the S3, we need to make sure this particular lambda role is having 
S3 read access at least, right? So here I will add the permission and then here S3 I will search for S3 full access maybe I am providing because this is just a POC in production environment we can fine tune the access not a problem and then here what I will do if you observe here we are having a bucket within that dataset folder is there currently it is empty and what our lambda code is doing within that bucket within that folder it is looking for this particular file let's see it will pass or fail so I will click on test and I will test it okay it failed okay so that means the file does not exist that's why it failed you can go to the cloudwatch matrix and you can visualize also its failure and successful scenarios so here cloudwatch matrix is getting loaded so here i can see that error count and success rate this particular cloudwatch matrix is available i can expand this and here you will observe that here one data point it is showing that means error occurred why error occurred because in our s3 the file is not available and you can think with respect to that example that in our s3 before 4 pm the underscore success file is not available that means the source team has not written the complete data like that okay right now suppose i am uploading that particular file and here i can choose the setosa.csv i will click on upload so here it is uploaded and now test it out click on test earlier it failed now if i run it see it is successful okay if i scroll below here you can see that file exists with name as setosa.csv so if file exists the lambda will pass it will not send any mail but as soon as it is not able to find out that particular file underscore success file on time what will happen the lambda will fail it will display in cloudwatch matrix and from that matrix you can create an alarm and using SNS, you can send the mail to the source team directly that the file is not available as per its expected time. And again, if you check the matrix, so sometimes it takes some time to bring the data in this particular CloudWatch. So just have little essence on this. So if you observe, see now here it is showing the success rate also. That is the data is available because it ran successfully. So here success count also it is showing one and earlier error count was also showing one. So as soon as error occurs, you can maybe create an alarm and send it, right? I hope you got the point. Now, obviously you can automate the process of running the Lambda using CloudWatch trigger, which I already discussed. So this way you can automatically check whether the data is added at its expected time or not. So that your downstream ETL jobs or task or process, whatever rely on that latest data, don't run any issue right i hope you understood this this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you for watching